Denzel. So this is cool. This is one of my favorite reasons to do the podcast is that interesting people just reach out and tell me about their business. So um, Manzil is uh, this. So this guy, Sam, reached out. He listens to the podcast. What's his last name? Sam Malaco, Halako, yeah, something him. like he that. Was tweeting at me too. And um, so he was like, "Hey, I got this business. You know, would love some help with it, um, or just would love to chat." And so I said, "Okay, let's let's chat." So I get on the phone, and I end up blown away by what these guys are doing. So they teach me about something I've never heard of, and is now very finance, very very uh, uh, fascinating to me. So what they do is Manzil does Islamic financing. Oh, we talked about that. What's that mean? We talked about it not on the podcast, but we talked about it offline because I was pretty interested in it. So, um, Henry, do you know what Islamic financing is? <laughs> if you didn't know Legion, I don't think you'll know this one. <laughs> so, are you are you Muslim? I'm Hindu? not. I'm Hindu. Well, I'm not, I'm neither, but like my uh, my family is Hindu. Um, so I didn't know about this, but basically, in the Muslim faith, there's um, actually uh, sort of uh, the advice is against. Um, traditional loans so uh interest which is known as like riba i think in the in in their faith is uh frowned upon in these uh, so a traditional mortgage where you go to the bank you have your down payment you take out a loan and you're paying interest is actually not compliant with um with their with their faith and their law and which is co- actually common in a lot of other different religions is that true uh, yeah so ones? i'm i'm catholic christian and uh was raised that way and there's definitely rules regarding handling money and interest and things like that yeah and i think the the fundamental basis and i'm going to kind of butcher this so i apologize but I'll, I'll i'm just trying to explain as best as i understand it uh so so apparently uh you know money uh you know, sort of fiat currency which is just not uh pegged in anything it's just a made-up concept uh the the belief system is that money has no value inherent value in itself and so you should not be charged interest for borrowing money which is this sort of abstract concept so they have loans or they have uh, sort of um, agreements which can work as long as both sides are taking shared risk and um, getting sort of shared shared upside, shared return in some way. Um, so there's – Is Sam Islamic? I believe so, yeah. And his, his partner Muhammad is also. And so they were explaining to me that, hey, there's this big thing called Islamic financing and there's these exla- uh, Islamic challenger banks. And so if you ever heard the word challenger bank, uh, check this out. It's pretty pretty cool. We know that banking's been around forever. There's these big bank brands that are, you know, in every country there's there's big banks that are worth billions of dollars. And recently, over the last, let's say, five to seven years, there's these things called challenger banks or neo banks, they're called. And so in Brazil, there's a bank called New Bank, N U Bank, and and New Bank is worth ten billion dollars. It's one of the most valuable startups in Brazil. In uh, the UK, there's challenger banks. Oh my God, I'm gonna forget the but name. But cha- challenger just means a new one. It's a startup bank, yeah, and they they offer different things. So what what these guys did was better digital access, so mobile apps, uh, quicker ability to get sort of credit cards and, and debit cards spun up, um, and so there's you know there's a couple of them that are huge now. A um, few different multi billion dollar startups done this. What these guys have done is uh, they've done this for a faith based. Uh, bank, which is basically saying there's a set of customers out there, in this case Muslims, who are not being served well by the generic banks, and we can make a bank that serves them better. And the way we're going to do it is you want to take a mortgage out, you can either take a sort of a mortgage out, tr- a traditional mortgage, which is not compliant, or you can m- take one out that's compliant with your faith. We've come up with a mechanism that is blessed by sort of the, the village elders, you know, the, the sort of leaders in the, in the community. Uh, that says, yes, this is, you know, I think Sharnia Law is what it's called. It's, you know, it's compliant with Sharnia Law. And then on the other side, this is um, this will this works as a mortgage. You can actually buy your home. And so these guys have this have this concept. And in other countries, this is apparently really big. So in Africa, Indonesia, places where the Muslim population is the dominant population, they've already solved this problem. But in places like U.S., Canada, where it's just a minority of the population is is Muslim, they don't have these banks yet. So I love this startup idea because how are they doing? So how they're doing? So they they uh, they spent a lot of time making sure that they can actually get it to be compliant and actually get the financial mechanism to work. That took them a, a while, over a year, maybe two years. Now they've gotten that to work, and they have uh, basically they have two sides of a marketplace. On one side, they have people who are investors, because you know if you're going to issue mortgages, their average mortgage is like five hundred thousand dollars. So it takes a lot of capital to start this business. They don't want to be the one. They don't want to go raise a billion dollars and then start issuing these loans. They want on one side to have investors who uh, will put in the capital to fund these loans. And on the other side, they want to have the borrowees who are trying to buy a home who can pull from this pool of 
you know, sort of halal financing, you know, this, uh, bl this financing that's compliant. And so they have $10 million committed on the, on the investor side, 1.2 million in their bank, 10 million total. And then, um, and they're just, every week they're trying to close more Which of those is checks. Nothing. I think which is a small amount but this, this is like just inbound interest this is not like they haven't really done anything yet but 10 million will let you let you do if you just do half a million dollar loans that means they can do whatever 20 mortgages um, uh, right now and every mortgage has a certain value so it's about worth about I don't know 20k a year to them is that mortgage just in their fee that they get on top of it um, and so and on the other side they have all these applicants i think you know about a thousand applicants and these are what they call super prime applicants because these are people who are doctors lawyers they have good jobs they they have the money they have the means to 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 afford their homes they're just looking for a solution that doesn't force them to compromise their faith so i really like this business cool. there's a working model in the uk there's a working model in um in africa there's a working model in indonesia there's nothing in canada where these guys are and there's nothing really in the u.s uh where, where how many is. muslims do you think there are in, in america I think there's look this up. I think there's like a couple million, only two two million. I want to say, roughly. Um, That's pretty interesting. I like that. I think that there's a bunch of weird rules around banking. I mean, they're not weird. They should be there, but um, and so starting a, a starting a bank, I think is it's almost so like nearly impossible. It's very point. difficult. So what all the neo banks do, all the charter banks do, they're not is, real banks. They're not real banks. They sit on top of BBVA or they sit on top of these other banks, and they're just the they're the consumer facing layer. But the banking happens with their underlying partner, and it's sort of like the lead gen model that you're talking about. They go to these banks and say, "Hey, I can get you a whole bunch more customers. I'm going to spend all the money doing the marketing. They'll be banking with you, but we own this sort of relationship." Yeah, and that's actually pretty common. I use this thing. My debit card is simple. Right. Simple. I've heard of it. Yeah. Um, this is my debit card. It's pretty cool. I like it because the customer service, I can just text and they're like easy. These like young guys in Portland and they uh, they're easy to chat with and they answer 24 hours a day. They were acquired for $100 million. And I was like, this is like a freaking bank. That's it. Yeah. And I did. It's research, not a bank. Yeah. And it was what's it called? BBVA. Yeah. That's who they use. BBVA Compass. I think it's B exactly. They're under They're under. There's a few that are underneath all these. Now, the very first there's a now one of the challenger banks got their very first banking charter banking license Who? which is very rare i forgot their name but they just announced a couple weeks ago last two weeks that so the so now it's very interesting now once that seal broke because it was so hard to apply for this yeah i think what and you, you they need, all want it Robinhood wants their license brex wants their license it's just very hard for them to get this i think you need five percent or what's the number i think you need ten percent in reserve. Yeah, you need a certain amount of reserve. But that's which not is even the problem. Amount. It's just that there's no incentive for the government to give these out. They're like, ah, you you kind of highfalutin, you know, tech startups. Yeah. Do I really want to give this to you? You've only been around for so long. I don't know if I have the trust in you. So now the seal's broken. The first one got it. We'll see what what that means. Um, but what I like about these guys is they're not a bank. They're not taking your deposits. They're just doing loan issuance. So on one side they have the reserve cap, the the investment fund. But they're using the other people's money. OPM on one side, yeah, other people's money to make the, the loans, and they're the broker, and they take 1% to 2% of the transaction fee. Uh, and people are willing to pay a premium to have halal financing, just like people are willing to pay a premium for halal meat or for vegan or kosher meat, you know, whatever. Like right. People are willing to pay a premium for things that are compliant with their faith. I so think I think this could be big. And you know what's interesting? I think that they've had a hard time raising money from traditional VCs because this is they didn't understand hard it. to understand. Yeah, you have to, like – you know, most VCs are old white guys and, you know, it's uh, the sort of cliche and, you know, I know they do look into it, but I think that there's na there's the natural challenges of any high aspiration startup. They have those. They, they have the problems that any any startup that's really ambitious. But then they also have the problem of like, first, they need to educate you about this problem. Like you saw how I stumbled through this explanation and I talked to these guys for an hour you know, and that's where I am after an hour of really trying to understand it. But you and you ran this by Furcon, your your best. Your so partner, I ran, yeah, I ran Muslim. it by him. I introduced them yesterday. I said, "Hey, Furcon understands this. He's Muslim. He's an investor. He's a technologist, and he's an entrepreneur. If he doesn't like this, I don't like this." He, and but, what did he say? And so he, so he, he's like, "I've looked into this." He's like, "A lot of my friends really wanted this. I tried to look at what options are available in the U.S. They suck. They're really super high premiums." Is he practicing? For, um, yeah, like. You know, to an, to an extent, yeah. Like, what I want to know is, do really, like... Like, he doesn't cultural... pray five times a day, but he doesn't eat pork. Right, so he's, like, culturally... He, he drinks, but, like, his dad runs the mosque in San Jose, and, you know, like, it's... it's so even people you know. who are, like, culture who aren't incredibly devout are into this? 
if he had the option, he would prefer halal financing over not. If Got it was it. convenient. And he's like, the problem with all the existing options, they're not convenient, they're not easy to use, and they're very high premiums. He's like, if these guys did it conveniently, I think this could be big. So he's going to talk to him. We'll see. Like, I'm, I'm not a practicing Stay Catholic tuned. anymore. Are you are any, you guys Catholic? You're Catholic yeah. for sure, right? Do you eat yeah. meat on Friday? On Lent? Yeah. Me too. I went to an all boys yeah. Catholic high school. I don't practice anymore, but that's another thing. I don't eat meat during Lent on Fridays, so I try not to. So it's kind of. Like, it sounds like that's what it, it's kind of like. Where it's yeah, like people. It's if, a spectrum. It's a, it's a. You prefer it, but not. Yeah, you prefer it, especially if it's convenient for you. You 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 know the way Henry just said that a lot of guilt there of like yeah I should but I don't. So there's you know if you can make it where people do what they want to do without lifting a finger then they'll do it you know it's great that's, that's pretty cool I, I like that i like that thing or i like that angle of finding because i don't know anything about muslim culture right. i don't know anything about hindu culture which is you wh where you're from you i don't know you probably don't know too much about catholic yeah it's kind of an I interesting way to like look at how other religions do things um right another thing that we should talk about not today because i don't think we know what we're talking about we definitely don't yet is building things on top of banks i think that's super interesting what do you mean by that so, like what Simple did, and like what the what, what's the name of this company? Manzil. Man, spell it. M A N Z I L. Manzil. Okay, kind of like what Manzil did, a building, a building a front end on top of someone else's back end. Right. Which is the bank. Um, I think that that's really interesting. Simple dot com is my uh card. I didn't know they did this at first. This is kind of what drop shipping is. So where you build the layer that says, I'm going to get the customer to a landing page and they buy. Yep. But it's just going to place an order with this other <laughs> manufacturer and they'll ship it directly but to it's them. it's super effective. I like that with banks because um, like Simple, they did this. It's all, I mean, it's it's a little different. The card is all white and it's, it's a branding. slick looking. Yeah. Um, and their app is really good. And so it's kind of interesting. I, I think this is kind of what Brex is doing. It's right. It's a corporate That's totally what credit Brex card. Is yeah. They're layered on top of MasterCard. Um, I, I love these things. I, I really like that. Yeah.